Not happy with the service you're getting from your bank? It may be time to switch. Learn how credit unions work and see if there are a better banking option for you. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. Where you bank matters. For most families, their checking and savings accounts are the backbone of their financial system. When they're not working, it just makes everything that much harder. We know because in the past, we've had some really bad experiences with a few of the big banks, believe it or not. Whether it was dealing with bad customer service, the needless fees that kept coming up, and then these minimum balance requirements, even though the interest rates they were offering were abysmal, we just felt like it was a headache and a chore dealing with them. Years ago, we decided to move our money to where we could get better service and perks like more competitive rates with our savings accounts. One of the places we picked was a credit union specifically Coastal Credit Union. Not only are they sponsored the show, but we've been happily using them as our credit union for over 10 years. We've been happy by switching over, but the focus today is not on us, but on you. It doesn't matter to me whether you choose a community bank, a credit union, an online bank, or yes, one of the big players. I just want you to be happy with where you bank, which is why I'm happy to have Emily Nails, Vice President of Cooperative Strategies and Executive Director of the Coastal Credit Union Foundation on the show today. If you're not familiar with credit unions, this can be a great introduction because in this episode, we're going to get into how credit unions work, the benefits that credit union members can enjoy, and how credit unions positively impact their communities. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. For those who maybe are not familiar with the differences between a bank and a credit union, could you kind of go over those ways that they're different, but also they offer a lot of the same things. And I think there's a kind of confusion about that. Yes, that's a great kickoff point. A credit union is a not-for-profit business model, whereas a bank is a for-profit business model. That's the big glaring difference if you're looking at just the businesses as a whole. When you get into a credit union, we're actually set up in the business model of a cooperative, which means that the members, those people that we serve, actually own the organization. A cooperative business model is for the people that we are serving. We don't have shareholders. As you said earlier, we are not nickel and diming everyone. I love that. We are not because those people that we serve and use our products and services are actually the owners of the organization. It's a really unique opportunity to technically have ownership in an organization. Just to kind of hammer in on that point of the business model, and yes, I was mentioning nickel and diming, but really the business model behind banking is they have to answer to their shareholders, right? There's always this responsibility in a sense, whether, you know, that's your business model or not, of making sure that it is profitable, that they're hitting their goals and there's target their targets and their expectations. But with a the cooperative, they answer to the members. It seems kind of small, but I know I've been a Coastal member for over 10 years and I've noticed a difference with a lot of type of, like with the better interest rates. I've noticed on both sides with the savings, you guys have been pumping that up. I'm excited because, I mean, if there's going to be a upside to this higher interest rate period, it's at least my savings is making some money on that. But then also on the other side, is the mortgage. I noticed you guys have really competitive rates. We have our current mortgage with Coastal. And that really is that reflection, like you mentioned, is the shareholder. So the money isn't going to someone who owns the stock. It's the members in the community. I think a lot of people 
don't really appreciate. That's something that credit unions just based on their models can do. Yeah, that money doesn't go to the stakeholders. That goes back to the owners in the form of those types of benefits, better rates, better savings, better products, better services. We align ourselves with the communities that we serve. So we look at what the needs are for those communities and for those members, and we provide those solutions. Cooperative business model is around solutions for those groups of people. So you typically find in cooperative business models, the members or the owners or the users basically are finding a solution that works best for them. That's a really unique way of looking at the credit union. On top of that, the cooperative business model has cooperative principles that we follow. And those cooperative Mm. principles align across industries. So whether you're looking at a food cooperative, a credit union, an electric cooperative, utility, telephone, any of those, we all have these principles. There were original seven cooperative principles. And now in North Carolina, we've adopted an eighth cooperative principle. But these principles really outline how we can help our community and help our membership be the best opportunity and sustainable and helping our community education, all kinds of great things that really lead us and how we drive our organizations. I do want to talk a little bit more about how you're educating members, because I think that is a fantastic resource for a lot of people. But just taking a step back, talking about the services that you offer. I know different credit unions, they put their energies different ways, but Coastal and a lot of credit unions nowadays, from the customer member side, you don't see much of a difference. Like the app, I use the app constantly. I work from home. I do a lot of direct deposit, digital deposits, but I still have clients that send me checks. And so it's just easy to do the check deposit right through the app. Can you talk about that? Because I think a lot of people think, oh, credit unions are a little behind. And I think more and more credit unions, especially Coastal, maybe a little bit about its history, is they're pretty innovative. And a lot of things that we need to do, we can do already. Definitely. So Coastal was originally the IBM credit union. So we Mm. came from some really impressive uh, folks that started a credit union in a broom closet in one of the IBM branches. They started this because there was a, a problem to solve. They needed access to financing. They needed to find a way that they could lend money to each other. They created this credit union to solve that problem. From there, we have actually at Coastal, been really innovative with our technology and our offering. A lot of times people have this misconception that credit unions are behind the times. I'm not sure if that came originally just because it was a grassroots effort to start these Mm -hmm. organizations, but really Coastal does take innovation and creativity and thinking outside the box really to the next level with our tellers are housed in one location and you can go into any of our locations and speak to a teller virtually gives us the opportunity to not only save our members money by one of the biggest costs associated with any type of organization is salaries. We have a very streamlined way of having our members see a teller, but also through our different digital offerings where we can go out into different communities and help out with the solutions that these folks need, the products that they need. So we do look like a bank, but we're a credit union. We're a cooperative. For a lot of families at the end of the day, it's like, can I just take care of what I need to with my finances and get the deal that I need with whatever it is, whether it's savings or a mortgage. So I I think If credit unions are not on people's radars, they should at least try, see what's available, especially here in the Triangle with Coastal. But I do want to talk about some unique benefits. The first one is besides the website and the app, Coastal has like an education center. You guys have on YouTube, you got seminars and a lot of things on that. Can you kind of talk a little bit more about what Coastal offers and then also why it's so important to have that for the members? Definitely. One of our cooperative principles is education, training, and knowledge. And that not only applies to our internal employees and board members and volunteers, but that applies to our membership and making sure that they are educated in budgeting, saving, wealth management, mortgage, you know, home ownership, 
Coastal really believes in affordable housing and providing that opportunity to everybody. And with our education offerings, you mentioned some of them, we have some online that people can do as a self-study opportunity. But we also have different departments inside the credit union that will come out on site and do trainings, Mm -hmm. interactions, things with different groups, depending on the audience. Just briefly, we have a wealth management division that will come out on site and assist with what does retirement savings look like? What does investments look like? What do you need to set up all of these different aspects of future planning? We have our mortgage and our real estate department here in sight. So we can go out and talk about what is a first time home buying program, what opportunities are out there to get grant money or to get home buying assistance money for those first time home buyers. We have realtors on site that help us find where the best places to look for different ownership opportunities. And then we have a community impact team. And this community impact team, let me tell you, I might be biased because I'm part of it, (laughs) but we have a team that goes on site to schools and does a program called The Reality of Money, where these students get an adult profile and they have to make life work. They might be just given as a student right now, but they actually have the light bulb go off about how expensive it is to live the life. You know, there's a statistic out there that There are people living and earning over $100,000 a year, and they're still Mm -hmm. living paycheck to paycheck because they don't know how to budget that money. So that's really a critical thing to understand that it doesn't matter where your salary falls. Really, it matters how you know how to spend that money or save that money and invest in yourself for the future. I think that's important because... Especially within the last few years, I think besides, of course, taking care of the essential, you know, banking options, we are more aligning towards putting our money, spending our money, saving our money for things that are important to us and our values and community supporting the community is absolutely one of those concerns of ours for us as a family. And that was something I noticed during the pandemic with Coastal that I really appreciated, right? It wasn't just like a slogan, we take care of our people, but I saw like loan modifications. I was getting emails as a member of this coastal being proactive. How can we help? Did you get the email out during the pandemic offering toilet paper? I may have missed that one, but I was going to be surprised. (laughs) It was really helpful because I actually had friends and family that are coastal members. And I was like, did you check your email? It really was a relief. But besides taking care of members, another thing I really respect about coastal is uh, the focus on the community, like the, the money. And again, I know with the credit unions, how it's structured, the money is not going just to shareholders. It's coming back to the members. It's coming back to the community. Could you tell me a little bit about some of the programs the foundation's doing with the community Coastal's working with and why it's such a priority? Definitely. So with our Coastal Credit Union Foundation, we have this 501c3 arm of the credit union, the philanthropic arm. And we have a couple different focuses that we have for granting nonprofits in our communities to make a bigger impact. So Those areas are affordable housing. Like I said earlier, that's a huge focus for us. It's a need in our area. Financial well-being, which comes anywhere from the education side to just being able to have an account and understand that account and use it to the maximum benefit of the member. And then the last one is access to resources. And I like to call this our catch-all bucket, but we have like a really soft spot for food insecurity around that access to resources and making sure that, you know, we are assisting nonprofits that are making this impact in our community. So we have 16 different counties that we serve around the Triangle area. And the foundation really focuses on organizations that are, you know, aiming to solve these three areas of funding. So we go out, we meet with these people, we grant money, but it doesn't stop there. We then bring those organizations along with us for the ride because we also have a really big emphasis on employee volunteerism. This is critical in a cooperative. Giving back of our time, talents, and 
our uh, treasures is something that we believe in and building a community requires that. So we then bring our nonprofits in and make sure that they have all the you know, help they need in volunteer hours. So we have an internal opportunity for our staff mm-hmm. to sign up for these different volunteer hours throughout the year. And so every employee gets eight paid hours to go out and volunteer throughout the year at whatever organization they choose. They don't have to choose from one of ours, but we definitely provide our employees with opportunities that are maybe outside of their, you know, normal day to day to go out and volunteer with these nonprofits. Then the next step to this is that we bring those folks together to network and connect with other foundations. So in the spring, we hosted a philanthropy summit and it was hosted alongside some other credit union foundations, as well as some other for-profit organizations who have foundations as well. So we bring in all these nonprofit leaders to not only network amongst themselves, but also meet the leaders of these other foundations to give them access to more grant opportunities and more opportunities to create a bigger impact. So that was done in the spring and we'll have another one here in the fall. And these are different ways that we really show that we care about the communities that we're serving. We have this cooperative mission, vision, value that we want to make sure our members are being taken care of in the best way we can. This segment is brought to you by Travel Freely. I know we have some travel hacking families in our community who love using the rewards for family vacations. And there are many who want to join them. However, it can be tough to sort through all the offers. This is where Travel Freely can help. It simplifies your search and makes it easy to find the best offers and deals that fit your family and how they spend. So you are maximizing your rewards. If you want to learn more on how to travel hack your next epic family trip, please go to simplifyandenjoy.com slash travel freely. Before we wrap up, I want to focus on some key takeaways I picked up from speaking with Emily as well as preparing this episode. The first one is know your banking options. Many of us are familiar with the big banks, not just because of the advertising that they do, but if you're like us, when you opened your student accounts, they had the specials and deals. And maybe at the time they were the best solution for that. But now that you have more responsibilities and needs financially, now can be a fantastic time for you to reevaluate if you're getting your needs met with your bank. Like I mentioned at the top of this episode, while we chose going with a credit union for a lot of our banking, there are other options out there. It could be a community bank, online banks as well. To me, it doesn't matter specifically which one you choose. It's something that I want you to be happy with. And we're very happy with where we're banking and I want you to feel that way too. The second takeaway is where you bank matters. Besides the personal and financial benefits you may receive by switching over to another bank or credit union, you might also want to consider, does how they impact the community align with my values? The last one is, if you're not happy with the service you're getting right now, go ahead and move your money. I have an entire episode that's dedicated on how to seamlessly switch to a new bank or credit union that can help you step by step make the process less stressful, and help you set things up for this next year to be an incredible one. And if you're looking with getting that foundation set up and getting a budget that reflects your goals, your circumstances, and your values, make sure you're a part of our community. Besides resources for each of the episodes of the podcast, I also enjoy sharing extra tips and tools to make simplifying your money, home, and life easier. You can sign up for free at simplifyandenjoy.com slash join. We'd love for you to be a part of the community. I hope this episode makes you feel more comfortable with the idea of moving your money if you're not happy with where you are. Since you're working so hard for your money, you deserve to have a banking option and partner that works just as hard as you. And if you're in the Triangle area of North Carolina, and you're looking to make a switch, 
please check out Coastal Credit Union. As we covered in our interview, they have great service, competitive rates, and they are focused on taking care of you. You can check them out at simplifyandenjoy.com slash coastal. As always, I'll include all the resources we've mentioned, including that link to Coastal, plus more over in the show notes at Simplify and Enjoy. Next week on the podcast, as we are winding down these episodes, I want to help you start setting yourself up for some big wins with your family and finances in 2024. We're going to go over a checklist of what you need to have so that you can make this your best year ever. If you don't want to miss out on that episode, make sure you're subscribed. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Audible, and more. Our theme was by Staircases with additional music from various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you not only listening, but also sending in your questions and ideas for the podcast and sharing your favorite episodes with your friends. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.